Hello ladies and gentlemen, Willy here. With Molten Core being on farm for some time now and Blackwing Lair on the horizon, today I wanted to take a look at some of the things you can do to excel in raids. Certain abilities can make you stand out, some things that may be special to your class that you can look at doing or in some cases bringing along to your raid. There are some small things that can make a big difference overall. Of course, in an environment with 39 other people around, it can be pretty hard to stand out and do things that will get you recognized as an exceptional player. But that's no reason not to make an effort. And of course, the more people in your raid making that effort, the easier and smoother your raids will go. So let's take a look at some of the ways you can do that little bit extra to help your raid out. Let's start off with something that is perhaps more important than anything else, raiding in classic, communication, being on the same page, understanding what your role is in the raid as a whole. Getting buffs correct and sorted before you step foot in a raid is the first thing you should have on your mind, whether it's in a pug or with your guild. Certain classes have very strong buffs and you don't want to miss out or overlap them. A brief chat before you get started can have you ready to perform even before you make your first pull. Shamans should be swapped out into individual groups to match their totems. Shamans into deep restoration with mana tide with other healers, improve weapon totems with melee, and spread others throughout groups to maximize the benefit you're getting from them. Paladins have many, many buffs, the most important being salvation on DPS and light on tanks, followed by kings, blessing of might and wisdom, and then sanctuary and finally light on DPS. So up to five paladins to cover all buffs. Kings and sanctuary need talents, blessing of wisdom and might can also be improved through talents. So give it a check prior to raid to make sure they're all ticked off. Uniquely, Paladins have Pally Power, an add-on where one person can see what others have talented and set up buff assignments based off that. This does however require each Paladin to actually use this add-on and have ticked a box allowing other people to set their buffs for them. So it sounds like a great idea in theory, it tends to be easier just getting it done through talking though. Finally, Warlocks will have their three curses that should be maintained at all times. No improvements to be made here through talents for the Warlock. These are Curse of Shadows, Elements, and Recklessness. Weakness isn't really used. Bosses don't quite warrant it yet. Recklessness is more or less always the top priority since the boss takes more physical damage. Therefore, the tank generates more threat as with the other melee DPS, who tend to be the most frequent source of damage. The two curses are mainly for mages or Warlocks, so decide which is best for you. On the subjects of Warlocks, or other casters for that matter, something that can really set you apart is bringing consumables. And no, I'm not just talking about the regular consumables that increase your damage here, more specifically limited invulnerability potions. These give you a short period of immunity to physical damage. They work exactly the same way as Blessing of Protection. And for you Horde players, that means you cannot use physical attacks or receive physical damage, but you can still cast or be hit by healing spells or damage dealing spells. If you want to precast at the start of a fight and not be worried about that shadow bolt critting and the boss making a beeline to take your head off, these potions are invaluable, even if you just get a string of crits and pull aggro as well. Using one of these will make the boss swap back to its next highest threat target, which is hopefully the tank whilst you're immune to damage. Following that you can either ease off on the damage to let the tank pick aggro back up or blast away and communicate another way for the tank to gain aggro again, like using Mocking Blow for example. In some fights, the only thing that can go wrong is poor threat management. This is an easy band-aid to that end. Pick them up, put them on your bar. Handling over aggroing like this will definitely get you noticed as someone who is prepared and knows what they're doing. Melee and tanks can also do something similar with free action potions. Certain packs are full of mobs that stun, making loss of threat very easy to come by like the tricky double molten destroyer pack just before Gar in Molten Core. Fapping beforehand it keeps you safe and more importantly the rest of your raid safe. As for melee fights like Golemag or Sulphur and Harbinger they're also full of adds that stun so just fap away and go ham on them adds. On a final note on consumables are Goblin Sapper Charges. These have gone down quite a bit in price since World PvP has died out and the poor PvP rankers are stuck in AV all day, but they can be a cheeky way to edge out some extra nice DPS on bosses, more specifically bosses with adds. Now this is more of a thing in Molten Core than it will be in Blackwing Lure or any other raid really for that example, but for bosses like Shazra, Golemag, Sulphur and Harbinger, and even Major Demo Executors to name a few, are decent fights to lay down a sapper if you can afford to do so. This next one may require a bit more trust from your raid, and it's a small thing to do, but it's a nice touch. Ideally, when you're getting a new target as a warrior, the first button you want to be pressing is Sunder Armor, whether you're a tank or DPS, doesn't matter. Sunder can go up to 5 stacks and reduces a boss's armor by a pretty substantial amount. So getting to 5 
as soon as possible is beneficial for you as well as everybody else. Sunder can also be cast from any stance, so you don't even need to go into defensive stance to get this done as a DPS warrior. Now, yes, Sunder does generate extra threat, and this potentially could be an issue when followed up by a few crits, but if you just Sunder and then wait a few seconds, as you usually would for the tank to pick it up, you should have enough time to just start damaging normally. This simply gets the armor debuff rolling so much faster. A tank doing this on his own, it could easily take him over 10 seconds to do so. If everyone does it as their first GCD, it happens pretty much straight away. Not being afraid to taunt. This can go for any capable class of course, but it's mainly for warriors again to be fair. They have more ways of taunting than others do. More specifically, they do have short duration taunts such as Mocking Blow, which will force the target to attack them for a short period of time. Often trash mobs are very dangerous, but they also go down pretty fast. If you're a DPS warrior, chances are you have a decent amount of plate by now. Pressing Mocking Blow and popping on a shield, you are very unlikely to go down. And this can happen in a whole bunch of scenarios where the main tank loses aggro to CC, different warriors are assigned to divide out different mobs in trash packs, a mob will go down so much faster if someone is willing to taunt and keep it where it is, over threat being lost and it running over to the range pack to start taking people out. The power of Divine Shield. No alliance favour here, honest, it's just that Divine Shield deserves a special mention as it has some special applications in the game. First of all, you may have seen this done, but pulling with bubble on some bosses is the easiest way for everything to get separated out to its correct location. If a tank is pulling, they're going to be taking a huge amount of damage during a pull phase, which will need to be healed, which will mean your healers can easily take the threat. Sending in the paladin with bubble allows tanks to easily taunt off that person at the start of a fight, and dividing the aggro up of mobs before anyone has even taken a single point of damage. This can be especially useful on fights like Gar or Major Domo Executors, where dividing trash out makes the fight substantially easier. Another special mention for Divine Shield on the Ancient Core Hounds and their ability Ancient Despair that can easily cause this big old doggy to walk over to the top DPS and just chomp them while everyone's disorientated. Having a Paladin on rotation to bubble and dispel the main tank can avoid any accidents, and it's a pretty solid counter to this ability. Similar to the buffs mentioned earlier prior to entering a raid, it can also be a good idea to do the same thing for Hunter's Tranquilizing Shot ability, which gets rid of Enrage effects. Enrage is a pretty common mechanic through Molten Core, and will continue to be so throughout the duration of Classic. Enrages are usually on bosses and increase their damage against their current target by a pretty large amount so getting them off as soon as possible can make a big difference. Sort it out pre-raid, be on the safe side instead of standing there being confused. I imagine by now there'll be weak auras showing if your trank shot has missed or been resisted at this point, since there are already similar things implemented for taunt. Calculated pulling. Hunters are already the best class for pulling in raids, due to having the longest range in the game with a hawk eye talent, which pretty much all hunter builds will have. A knowledgeable hunter making pulls can speed up your run considerably. I would make sure others, especially the tanks, are aware of your intentions before you start randomly pulling stuff though, and make sure you have feign death ready to go in case you do mess up before your whole raid pays the price of a dodgy pull. On the same level, rogues can also be very helpful pulling by using distract on certain packs. Some patrols or even bosses have a rather annoying habit of walking up to other patrols and sort of just standing there for a minute or two. Rogues can distract to the correct moment to give your raid an easier time making sure these mobs are separated and allowing a safer pull. And finally, the PvP trinket. This can actually be pretty useful in certain PvE encounters, especially if one of your trinket slots isn't great anyway. Some bosses have CC abilities that can be countered by a well-timed trinket. Sometimes you can't break CCs apart from dispels anyway, or your healers need to dispel the majority of the raid, so you may need to wait a little bit before that spell comes. At the end of the day, your gear can be as good as you want, but if you aren't hitting the boss, you aren't doing a whole lot of damage, are you? Bosses like Magmadar have a short duration fear that can be trinketed. Plenty of bosses have stuns in Molten Core, although they are often quite short duration. Finally, this does depend on what exactly your PvP trinket does. They're different for everyone, so give it a look. It's a good option if you can do it on certain bosses. The Magmodar example has worked very well for me as a Warlock, since I can dispel the fear with my trinket. And that's it, just 10 ways you can look to improve your raid performance that little bit. Try to stand out a bit more than just being a random number in your raid that turns up every week. It may just bump you up a spot or two on who gets that next item you want. Got any other tips that you go by? Drop them in the comments below. I do hope you guys enjoyed this video, and as always, I will see you in the next one. If you like what you see, give the video a like and subscribe as there's plenty more to come. 
As always, thank you all so much for watching. Take care. Bye.